Hey guys, welcome back. So I figured, I'm going to take a sip of Gatorade. I figured that we would play with scrapbook paper because there are a lot of people that have been asking me to use scrapbook paper. They want to see how I incorporate it into junk journals. And I'm just moving some stuff around because I'm going to take up a lot of space today um, with what we're going to do. Uh, but first, I wanted to show you guys the journal cover that we did yesterday, which is here. So, and this is just something pretty for you guys to look at. So this is the journal guts, if you will. And if you remember, we did the lace pockets here, and we can take these out now. And we did the lace pocket here. And we're done with those, so we can just make them go poof. and there we go now we have our cover well the inside of our cover is done and then uh, voila okay so I wanted to um, show you guys that that's what we did yesterday but I wanted to um, that's my iron we will be ironing today uh, I'll get it out eventually. I wanted to use some scrapbook paper because like I said, I've had a lot, a lot of people ask me, like, how are you using scrapbook paper? What do you do? Like, I have so much of it. I don't know what to do with it. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It's all the same. There is a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of scrapbook paper and nobody really knows what to do with it because I just have so much of it. I'm one of those people. I have a ridiculous amount of scrapbook paper. So what I have in front of you right now is some Christmas-esque papers that will go well in my journals and some of them not so much and I'll explain. So this one is called Fairy Tale. It's a paper pad. Um, I haven't even opened it. That's a lot of my paper pads, uh, believe it or not, are like this because I will buy them and then I'm like, oh, then I'll tear it. And then I'm just like, you know, I set it aside and I never really get to it. Come on, you can do it. There we go. And I'm just going to tape that down so it doesn't keep moving around. I'm going to tape the other side too. I don't really anticipate using the this part for anything other than to be covered, um, like collaged, but I don't want to rip it further, so hence the tape. Anyway, so this is called Fairy Tale. It is by Recollections. I don't remember when I bought this. Um, I bought it not too recently because I haven't been shopping and like out in public. I haven't been out in a minute. Um, so Wayne went on leave today. Today was his last day of work until after the surgery. Um, I'm pretty excited, but at the same time, I'm nervous because it is surgery. So anyway, I don't know where that came from. That was just like in my head. Um, I am recording at night. I've had a migraine all day long, so... Hopefully it will go away enough for me to kind of get this video up for you guys. But anyway, this is the paper and I thought that it would lend itself very nicely to the color palette that we have chosen so far for the four journals. So there's that. But if you guys noticed, it is single sided. So there's no back to this. And a lot of people are just like, you know, well, what do I do with the back? Because the back is white. It's, you know, not very pretty. These are napkins. These are some of the napkins that I have um, recently obtained. Uh, there's eventually, hopefully, I will have them up. But as of right now, I just don't have the room for more inventory in my house. Um, so I'm trying to reorganize, rearrange, and whatnot. Anyway, this is a Christmas tree with some music um, and a little shab with some music. And then we've got the little buddy on both sides we got two of those and then this one here 
is two little buddies with some snow. Um, oh, and I grabbed some just kind of random postcards. I actually have a huge stack of these. I used to volunteer at a thrift store and they would get like stuff like this in by the boatload and they wouldn't know what to do with it. So I just grab a stack and take it home and I haven't done anything with it since. So now we're going to do something with it. And also we have um, some stickers like this page has like four stickers left on it. I want to go ahead and use that up, get it out of here. Same thing with this one. It has that single sticker. Use it up, get it out of here. Just some vellum. As you guys know, I love my vellum. I have always loved my vellum. You click off of OBS. Okay. Um, here is some paper. I used this in um, some of the tags that we made. Let me move you guys out just a smidge. And back up. There we go. Okay. Don't mind my scissors. Okay. This is just scrapped over there. But these have a back side. I actually had separated all this paper out for a different reason, but it actually works well for what we're going to do today as well. This is a sheet of stickers. I have looked high and low for this paper pad. I cannot find it. It is by Kaiser Craft. It is called Frosted. And it is from many moons ago. It is not a new collection. It is an old collection, but I cannot find it and I want more of it. Um, but it is by Kaiser Craft. And there is a piece of this. We use this in the making of some of the cards. Let's see. Let's see if I can find some. We can do these, they are nice and thick. Oh, another thing that you can do, uh, I'll do that later. Okay. Sorry, I'm like thinking out loud. I know I pulled out some like not so attractive pages because I wanted to kind of show you guys what to do with them. And I pulled obviously some attractive pages because, well, I want to play with them. Um, this is also by Kaiser Craft. I really like Kaiser Craft paper. Uh, it, lends itself very well to my particular aesthetic. Um, let's see. Oh, and the super thin paper. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that with this. Um, maybe not. That back's not going to work. But this will. All right, so this is a thinner paper. We're going to take this whole shebang here real quick and we're going to move it. And the very first thing that we're going to do to our scrapbook paper to make it a little bit more junk journal worthy is I kind of like this side here. It'll be easy to write on. It'll be easy to um, collage or whatnot. So I'm going to leave this but this side is a little too, too much for me. It's too red, I guess. I don't know. So I'm going to cover it up and I'm not going to cover it up with napkins. I'm going to cover it up with fabric and paper fabric can be used at, this is a heating mat. It's just an ironing mat. I've used it many, many, many years. Um, I've used it for inking and spraying and ironing. This poor mat has been through so much. But anyway, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it with some heat and bond. You can use glue if you want. I just happen to have the heat and bond, so I'm going to use it. I actually have a lot of it. I need to use it more often. Okay. So I'm going to cut that off, but I'm going to leave this part on because I have an ulterior motive, which is why I'm doing the heat and bond first. So I have one sheet of parchment paper left. This is it. I actually 
before I turned my camera on, I had to go onto Amazon and order more parchment paper because I didn't have any left. This was it. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to mark the underside of this so I know that this goes down every time. Okay. And hopefully that will stay. It is in permanent marker. There we go. But I don't necessarily want it on my fabric or on my paper. So I'm just going to take my iron. It is on. It's been on. I did plug it in before I turned the camera on. Aren't you proud of me? So we're just going to let that sit for a second. Um, we're going to iron this smooth. I don't do editing. So if you guys want to skip this part, um, by all means, I completely understand. It is pretty boring just to sit here and watch me iron. Um, not the most fun thing in the world and I'm gonna do it again all right so it looks like we might be done it doesn't take long not at all so I make sure that middle is good and down the edges So we're going to let that sit for a hot second just to let it kind of breathe a little bit. So when we pull it off, it will come off the parchment paper as well. Okay. All right. It doesn't look like there's any. Yeah, there's a little bit right there. But that's why we mark the... The paper. I know y'all probably can't see it. It's super duper faint, but it's just enough for me to know that I need to put this side down each time so it doesn't damage my iron. I mean, it is a crafting iron, but I still don't want glue all over it because then I'll end up with glue all over my projects and that'll be fun. So anyway, you let it cool a little bit and then it'll just peel right off. So we're going to take this, we're going to cut this down. Actually, you don't even have to do that because I'm going to take this, put it with the rest of my thing. You're going to peel this up. You're gonna, gonna peel this up. <laughs> there we go. And you can actually see also too where you might need to do some more heating. So see that light color? That means that the glue didn't quite adhere to the... Oh, what's it called? Paper. So I'm actually going to flip this right on over and we're going to use this heat and bond paper as our parchment paper. All right. So let's grab our fabric. Now this is non uh, non non dimensional paper, so it doesn't matter the orientation. So I'm just going to grab the corner here because we don't want to waste any fabric. So I'm trying to push it over as much as I can. All right. Actually, at this rate, we won't even need the other parchment paper because I can just do it like this. Oh, we're going to iron it again. And take more care to keep the iron kind of in that spot where 
it needed to adhere to the paper, which I, to be honest with you, I don't remember which one that is because uh, I just laid it down. I just know it was on the edge, so we're just going to keep focusing the edges. I swear I heard something behind me, either a child or a dog. I'm losing my mind, guys. Crazy. Do you ever get like delirious whenever you have a migraine? I swear my brain goes out the window when I have a migraine. If what I've had one all day long, but I didn't record anything for you guys this morning, so I was like, you know, I really have to record. And he's just like, well, won't they understand? I was like, yeah, they will, but I just, I don't know. I I really want to. I think it'll make me feel better. <laughs> And, you know, it has. I mean, yeah, I still have my migraine. It's not, it doesn't just go away, unfortunately. But, um, it does feel like, it feels good to be in here. It feels good to talk to you guys. It feels good to, like, you know, be helpful because, you know, I'm doing something that, you know, has been asked of me. And it's nice to... Be amazing, as one of my comments said. It's really awesome. And it's nice to actually feel like you're amazing, too. Uh, because it's one thing to have other people tell you how good you are and how amazing and wonderful you are. But it's another thing altogether to believe it yourself. And once you have that feeling, there's like nothing else in the world. It's Oh, it's insane. It's insane. But anyway, yes, I get delirious when I have migraines. <laughs> it's like my brain stops working or something. I don't know. Which is completely possible, you know. Just saying, because it is my brain that's like all out of whack and uncopesthetic. All right, so that is very warm. I told Wayne that I wanted a crafting iron, but at the same time, I don't know that I do because I've heard that crafting irons do not get as hot as like fabric irons. And maybe that's just false. Maybe it's just, you know, dependent on the iron that you get. If you guys have a crafting iron, let me know like what kind of temperature it gets to it gets super hot and in all honesty I don't even know what temperature this thing gets to I just know that it gets really hot like I just touched that paper right after I put the iron down and I'm pretty sure I just burned my fingers like not bad enough to be like oh no I burned my fingers I'm gonna go to the hospital nothing like that it's just like you can tell a difference in your skin if you've, you know, burned it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to iron this again because I can see there's a bubble right here and I need to iron that down. And then we're gonna have, yeah, I can see it. Oh, craziness, crazy, I tell you. You know, it's funny, though, because every time I come in here, I've always got something on my hands. <laughs> Whether it's glue, ink, paint, or when I leave here, rather, not when I walk in here, but when I leave the craft room for the day, or even if it's just to take a break. I always have something on my hands. But that just means that you had a good day, right? That's what I feel. All right, so now we have this fabric here that's left and I actually have a good deal of this fabric uh, I got two yards of it when I bought it I bought it off of Etsy I think I showed you guys in an Etsy share but anyway um, so there's still a good chunk of that left uh, let's see we're gonna iron right here and see that red actually pulled a little bit of the color through into the fabric here which actually looks more pink than red. Okay, 
now you can take this paper and burn your fingers off. You can take this paper and you can cut it down to make cards or tags, or you can fold it in half and make a journal. I mean, I think you'd still need to cut it down because my journals are nine tall and 12 across before I fold them. Um, but that just makes it really easy for me to use eight and a half by 11 papers inside. So there's that one. Now let's turn to some paper that is like not double sided. So you want to use really pretty paper, but you're just like, well, there's nothing on the other side. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, well, that's got fairies on it as much as I love that. I'm not sure that that would work. This one would be cool. Um, cause we can cut that up. I don't know how many of these actually have fairies on. I didn't think about that. I mean, it is called, you know, fairy tale. Oh, that one's got a fairy too. All right. So, which is very strange for me, by the way, for me to be like, no, it's got a fairy on it. Can't use it. <laughs> Do you know how like bizarre that is for me? The story begins. Well, that one's nice. We'll use that one. It's actually pretty nice. Let's use that one. And I'll show you what we can do with that. All right. So this, again, scrapbook paper. I'm just going to set that aside real quick. Okay. Let's grab this. And my down is actually up because it's on the bottom and not the top. Now we're going to make sure all the orientation is proper. And we'll just do two at a time, I guess. Okay, let's find a napkin that will go well. I actually think that one would go really well with that. I like the vibrant colors. Oh, that one's perfect. Look at that. That's perfect. All right. So we want to utilize the whole napkin. Okay. As much as possible. So if we don't utilize the whole napkin, we can save it, um, and do it again. So this particular technique that I am going to use, I have used several, several, several times on my channel. Um, I believe that most of those were live streams, so they are no longer available for public view, but I will go over how I do it. I use saran wrap or cling wrap or plastic wrap or whatever. I do not use the name brand. Um, I am not, I'm cheap, <laughs> so I'm not going to use the name brand. And when your napkin is giving you issues, take a piece of tape, bloop, put it on there and be like, yoink, I bid you come up and voila. Okay. You really do want to make sure that all the layers are off because, um, it's just like if you glue it down you're going to not be gluing the bottom layer. You're going to be gluing the one right before it. This one was really embossed. All right. So you can save these. You can add texture to um, journals and such. I'm actually going to start saving these and see what I can do with them. Um, so I have two in my collection now. <laughs> All right, so let's do this one and actually this one's probably not bad either. I like that color. I like that. Okay. We'll use this one on both of them. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your cardstock or your decorative paper or scrap of paper, coffee dyed paper, envelope, whatever, face down. 
the part that you're going to put on the napkin is just like decoupage. You're going to put it face up. You're going to grab a piece of plastic wrap of some sort. Put it on top of your card and then figure out where you want to align your napkin. And then I really want both of these guys, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but I can do that. Which means I've got these two over here. And we can do something with that. Okay. I'm going to scoot this down just ever so slightly. Grab my makeshift parchment paper. It's actually the backing to the heat and bond. Because remember, I ran out of parchment paper. Um, and then you just set your iron down, just like you would if it's heat and bond. Or any other iron-on adhesive. You just treat the plastic wrap just like adhesive. And voila. It is as easy as that. And this is like super, super, super easy napkin decoupage here. It's technically not decoupage, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the true definition of decoupage is, but it is a very, very easy and effective way to use your napkins and create beautiful paper in the process. So we're going to take our card here and we're actually just going to cut this straight away because we can leave this plastic attached to the napkin as soon as I find my scissors. And you can put napkin on any surface you want. You want to put it on fabric? Put it on fabric. You want to put it on paper? Put it on paper. You know what? Let's put some on fabric. We've got some fabric to play with here, and I think that would be an interesting texture to add to the journals. I'm not sure if the plastic will work on fabric, but we will find out. And if it doesn't, I still have heat and bond. So there is the front of the card, the scrapbook paper, and then there's the back. How cute is that? And it's nice and smooth, feels like fabric. It's great. Okay, so we'll set that down. Oh, I set this down and now it's all curly. All right, so there is that one. All right, stay. Now, let's find out if this will work with fabric. So let's take a piece here. We've got some fabric. All right, and then let's see. Okay. I'm just making it a little bit smaller so it's easier to mess with. All right, let's see, are you gonna work? You know, I am doubtful. I don't think this is going to work. I've never tried this before, but I figured, why not? We don't know unless we try, right? And I figure that a lot of the things that we come up with come from trial and error anyway. Whether it's inventions, such as like the light bulb, or, you know, 
whatever. Coffee dyed. Like, honestly, how do you think coffee dyed anything actually became a thing? I'm pretty sure one day someone spilt coffee on their paper and was like, oh my gosh, that's such a cool effect. What happens when I do it with a whole bunch? And before you know it, coffee dyed paper was a thing. And then we just ended up with all kinds of dyed paper. Coffee dyed paper, writ dyed paper, herb dyed paper. Like I know some people that use only organic things such as herbs and roots and flowers and such. Comes out really, really pretty. But yeah, um, I figure that's how we come up with a lot of things is just by mere accident, you know? Like, whoops, didn't mean to do that, but that was pretty cool. Let's do it again. What do you think? What, what is something that you have come across by sheer accident and you were just like, wow, that is really, really cool. You know, I don't know. I don't know what would be for me. I really don't. I mean, I don't necessarily do a lot of stuff by accident per se, but I do a lot of like experimentation. Like for instance, um, I drink a lot of water, right? And so I also drink a lot of soda water, like the flavored water, no added preservatives or sugars or anything. It's just like infused soda water. Well, I also drink Crystal Light um, because I do like soda and I do like, you know, flavored drinks and such. So I figured, hey, Crystal Light is supposed to go in water, right? I wonder what happens when I mix it in with the soda water. And what did I create? Uh, well, I don't know that I created it, but what did I get? I ended up getting this soda, basically. It was pretty cool. All right, there we go. I was waiting for it to be able to pull off of here, but it wasn't quite cooled enough. Hey, look at that, it worked. Sorry, I'm just like crazy right now. That is so cool. And then cut that up. And you have this really cool piece of fabric. You can use this as like a fabric flip or you can turn it into like a little mini journal to go inside your journal. Man, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. It's just fabric. I mean, anything you do with fabric, you could do with this thing. And I am cutting the edges because I don't want this extra glue um, into the journal project. So, oh, that is so cool. It's like napkin on one side, fabric on the other. And it feels like fabric. Like, that is crazy. Okay, I know we were supposed to be like, yeah, let's do some scrapbook paper. And then I'm over here playing with fabric. Oh, that's okay. I will name my video accordingly, I hope. Um, but yeah, that is so cool. All right, so let's use up the rest of this napkin here. Um, are you wide enough? Mm, not really. It leaves an edge. So let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do. I don't know what, what we're gonna do. We're gonna set that aside for now and we're gonna put this over here because that's really cool. Wayne brought me some Gatorade. 
I've been kind of nursing it because Gatorade's really high in calories. Um, but the sodium helps my headache a lot or migraine or whatever you call it. Okay. So this one, let's see, we are going to actually take another piece of scrapbook paper. Uh, that thing's over here. Um, I'm going to use, um, uh, let's use this one. I think this one here, it's got some stuff on the back. It's got some nice, you know, ledger muffins, crumpets, rolls and toast, icings for cakes. Um, we've got groceries and coupons and receipts and such like those. And this is scrapbook paper. Uh, this, I don't know what this came from. I'm so sorry. I have no idea. It feels like it's DCWV, but don't quote me on that. Um, I know that we all, you know, touch different papers and such, but that's what it feels like to me. Okay. So with this, I am going to just go like that. So let's cover this bad boy up. What time is it? 36. Ah, oh, not bad for having a migraine, right? I honestly figured I would look up at the clock and be like, oh my gosh, it's only been five minutes. I have like 25 more to go. But I'm telling you, man, it's being in this room. It is really helpful. It's like brightening. Is that a word? That's not a word. Brightening. It is cheerful and energetic. And like, it just takes your mind off of the stresses in life. And I think that everybody should have something like that. So I'm actually going to grab another sheet of the, um, the, this because uh, it didn't go all the way across. And so we're gonna do some patchwork here. And then I'm gonna take some of this one here. Uh, maybe it might be easier just to get a new strip of plastic. I need new scissors. I don't want new scissors. I love my scissors, but my scissors are so dull. And I know I've been saying that for a while. Y'all are probably like, would you just get new scissors already? <laughs> no, I don't want to. I really, really don't want to. Okay. Um, so I'm basically just trying to Franken plastic this together. So I don't have to get a whole new strip just for one teeny tiny square. All right, there we go. Okay, that works. Now, what are we putting on this side? Oh yes, the napkin. Okay, so and do this. and try to make sure that it goes all the way to the edge on both sides. I'm gonna start in the middle and go out and I can't iron with that. Although that would be very interesting. I'm sure I would burn my fingers way less often with, you know, ironing with this. <laughs> You know, just saying. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but this this little Gatorade here, I love this flavor, by the way. Uh, actually, it's not nearly as bad as I thought, um, but I'm used to drinking like the big, like the big ones that are like this size. Those have like 300 calories in them. It's crazy. But Gatorade is like a staple for me personally because, um, I have to watch my sodium and not in the normal sense of the word. I actually need to make sure that I have enough sodium. 
because I get super, 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 super lightheaded if I don't. And Gatorade is one of those things that, um, that we normally always have in the house. Um, some of the soda waters actually have a decent amount of sodium in them if you're looking for, you know, higher sodium. Most people look for low sodium, not high. I am not normal. I'm like, hey, you got more sodium in there? I need that. Yeah, because I'm a goofball. Don't mind me. Um, so anyway, ah, warm. So Wayne goes on leave. He takes his um, COVID test tomorrow, um, which I, I really wish that I didn't have a migraine today because I would have went and got my nails done today. But now as it sits, I have to wait until after his surgery because nobody can leave the house. Because instead of putting him on quarantine, I'm just putting everybody in the house on quarantine. They're like, nope, you can't leave. You are stuck. I have kidnapped you all. Yeah, but um, I mean, the kids normally go outside and play, but I'm just like, you know, what is, what is it gonna be? um one two three four five days i think they'll be okay and besides they can still talk to their friends like my two older ones they still play online um you know video games minecraft they they have their phones they can still talk to their friends they just can't like go and hang out with them Hey, let go. All right, I'm just making sure that this is down. What I really like about this is you can actually still, like you can see it here, warm, um, is the lettering poking up through the napkin, which I think is really, really cool. And that's another reason why I really like this technique um, because sometimes when you do like decoupaging and such, it won't, um, the transparency of the napkin won't come through as much, but I really do like how it does with this technique. Um, so I don't know. I just, I like it. I like the convenience of it. Um, I like the ease of it. Like it is, it's easy to do. All right, so let's move you over there. All right, I'm gonna, ow, ow, ow. Okay, ow. We're gonna cheat on this. <laughs> ow. And I'm gonna cut this like this. Okay. Oh, I lied. No, I'm not. I'm gonna cut this like this. So my trimmer does not like going through plastic. Not many trimmers do. Um, so I have to flip it over and go through the paper part. Uh, let's do this side. Nuggle, give me. And basically I'm, I'm just taking the slightest of a sliver off of the paper. So my blade has something to grab. So it's not just like getting mad at that plastic because it'll get mad at the plastic if you don't but that's it okay and then any places that you know our temperamental trimmer decided to leave like right here you can just go back and trim it up um and it's as simple as that and so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go through and kind of go over again but I'm not using the parchment paper because I want to see it. 
because there are some spots that have like air bubbles and that is where the plastic didn't melt properly. So you just go through and that's another reason why I trimmed it because I didn't want that plastic on my iron. And then that's it. And you really should leave it flat. Ugh. Otherwise you will end up with this. <laughs> so when I did this one, I set it down and I set it over there and it kind of curled up because it wasn't laying flat. So anyway, this is our, this is one side. So I plan on cutting these out exactly how they're laid out. And then they'll have these guys on the back. So it's kind of like when we collage um, and then we cut it out later. That's kind of what it, what's going to happen. So I thought that that would be really cool and unpredictable unpredictable and really nice. So that's something else that you can do with scrapbook paper um, I oh, and fabric. I mean, that's just, that's really cool. So we use two 12 by 12s and a couple of these, um, I don't even know what the size of this paper is, uh, four and a half by six and a half is what this paper is. And we use one of those and so yeah, we can actually incorporate this stuff into the journals that we're working on right now. So I want to thank you guys for joining me and hanging out with me today. Uh, I hope I helped somebody, you know, try to figure out what to do with some of this scrapbook paper and how to use it. Um, hopefully uh, we can get through some more scrapbook paper and utilize some more ideas to incorporate them into our journals. Because I know, like a lot of you, I have a lot, a lot of scrapbook paper. I really, really, really need to get through it. So, um, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. It was a lot of fun. And I hope to see you guys all in the next video. So, bye guys.